Hey guys, the great thing about network shares is that they can be accessed by almost all of your devices. Today I'm going to show you how to mount a network share onto your Raspberry Pi. We're going to need a directory that we can mount the network share to, so once you've logged into your Raspberry Pi using your favorite SSH program, we can go ahead here and change our directory to the mount directory. So that's cd, cd and then forward slash mnt with another forward slash, then you just hit enter. And then in here we're going to create a folder that we can use to mount the network share to. So the command to do that would be sudo. Uh, so that we have uh, administrator level pr privileges to do that. And then mkdir, which is the make directory command. And then you can go ahead and you can name the directory anything you want. I'm going to go ahead and name mine network backup, because in a future video, we're going to be uh, taking a copy or a backup of the Raspberry Pi, and we're going to be storing it on this network location, uh, the network backup file directory. So then we can go ahead and hit enter. And we don't get anything back, but if we run the ls command, the, the list command, we get the uh, we can see that the directory has been created successfully already got a location on my network in mind that I would like to mount onto my Raspberry Pi. It's hosted on my TrueNAS installation. And in the next step, we're actually going to need the username and password for a user that has permissions to access that network share. So if you haven't already got one of those users created and you're running TrueNAS, you can go ahead and check out my other video on creating users in TrueNAS. Uh, it will be linked somewhere up here and definitely in the video description down below. You can see the network location that I'm planning to mount on the Raspberry Pi here. You can see that it's at a vault, a scratch backup, a Pi backup, and there's already a couple of images that I'm using to back up my other Raspberry Pis in this folder. So that's the location that we're going to mount to the Raspberry Pi. The command that we're going to be using in order to mount the network drive is really quite substantial, so I'm going to copy and paste it in here. But don't worry, we're going to go through it line by line here and just see what we're doing. So the first item is the sudo item, and that means that the, the, um, the command is going to be run as an administrator so that we've got all of the right permissions in order to mount that network share. The next item that we've got here is the mount, and then it's got hyphen T and CIS. So the mount command is the command that actually tells you to mount the drive. And then the hyphen T is asking us what type of file uh, network share it is. So we're, we're specifying that it's of the CIFS type, which is uh, probably going to be the option that you want to select. And then we've got the hyphen O option over here. And that allows us to specify a couple of different options that we're, we're going to be using when we're mounting this drive. So the very first option is we want to specify a username and password in order to access the Raspberry Pi. So like I said a minute ago, you're going to want to have a username and password that allows you to access this network share. We're not going to be mounting it as a guest. I don't believe that that's particularly secure, even on your home network. Um, we're going to specify the username and password here. If there is no username and password for the um, the network share, then you don't need to specify a username and password here, and you can just mount it without these uh, options. However, once again, unless you really, really want everyone on your network to be able to access that, I would really recommend setting username and password. The next couple of options are the UID 1000 and GID 1000. So what we're doing here is we're specifying who the owner of this file is going to be whenever it's mounted. So UID 1000 is the default uh, UID for the Pi user in a Raspberry Pi. So what we're doing here is specifying that the Raspberry Pi user is the owner of this um, mount and can go ahead and read and write from the, the, the directory without any extra permissions needed. The GID is, is the default Pi group that's uh, specified as well. So any member of this group can do the same thing. They will own the mount, uh, the network mount, and they can read and write to the, the mount without any issues. Um, so that's just kind of convenient to throw in there as well. And then the next thing we're going to do, it's going a little bit off my screen here, but we're going to specify the network path that the, um, the drive is located at. So here we can see that I've had to specify because there's a space in between the words Pi and backup on the network share, I've used quotation marks here in order to close that off. But in the, the network folder itself, there is no quotation marks. That's just to tell it that it's all one word without, uh, and, and that the break here is not a space in the command. We're going to be doing something slightly different than using those quotation marks in a later command, but for uh, mounting it manually, that's the, the, way, the perfect way to, to do it. And then what we could do here is we just specify the destination on the Raspberry Pi itself. So here we're specifying the mount network backup destination that we've just uh, created a few minutes ago. So once we've typed all of that out, we're going to go ahead and just hit the enter command. And then after a second, we can see that uh, we get no, no error message back. Now that we've mounted the network drive, we just want to double check that it has indeed mounted correctly. Uh, just because we don't get any error messages back doesn't mean that it's necessarily been a success. So we can check that by typing in DF and then space and then hyphen H. 
and that will give us back all of the information it has on our file system. We can see that the network share is indeed mounted at the uh, bottom there and on the correct directory, the mounted network backup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear my screen now so that we don't have as much gunk on uh, the screen. You can do that by typing the clear command. And then if I go ahead here, I can type in the ls uh, command once more. Now remember that on the network share that I was going to share with the Raspberry Pi, there were some files, but if we type in the ls command here now and then hit enter, we don't actually get anything back. That's a quirk with the Raspberry Pi. You're, you're in the directory before uh, it's been mounted correctly. So if we just go back and cd into our main directory and then cd back into the mount network backup directory and then run the ls command, you can see that we've got some of the images that we uh, expect here in this directory. Next, we're just going to go ahead and create a test file in the directory just to make sure that we've got both read and write permissions on the directory itself before we go any further. So we can do that by going ahead and using the touch command, which will just create an empty file in the directory that we're in. So if we type in touch and then test, which will be the name of the file, we hit enter. It'll take a second for it to load there. But whilst it's doing that, we can go ahead and check in our network file. And we can see, in fact, that the test file was created here. And once we go back to the Raspberry Pi, if we type in ls, we can see once again the test file is listed there. So I'm just going to go ahead and rm, which is remove the test file. And we can see that we've also got privileges to delete the test file. It disappears after I uh, run the rm command, which means we've got full read, write, delete permissions on the network drive, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now that we've mounted the network share on the Raspberry Pi, you might think that we're finished. Almost, but not quite. The last thing that we need to do is make sure that it gets remounted whenever the Raspberry Pi is rebooted. If I was to reboot the Raspberry Pi right now, I would log back into the Raspberry Pi, go to the network backup folder, and I would find it was empty. It would not have remounted on uh, reboot. So we're going to go ahead and set that up now. So back in the Raspberry Pi, we're going to go ahead and run sudo and then nano, or you can use your favorite text editor that's available on your Raspberry Pi. And then we're going to access the file system table on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, which is at etc fstab. So here we've got the file system table, and this is the table that contains all of the information about what directories are and are not mounted on your Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to do now is specify a reasonably complicated command that will tell the Raspberry Pi to mount the network share on boot. I'm going to go through all of the details of that command, but if you're not too interested, you can also grab the command from the video description below, paste it in, and skip a little bit ahead in this video. So back in the file system table, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Now you can put this either above the comments here or below. It doesn't really make a whole pile of difference, but I'm going to paste in the rather complicated command that I was talking about, and then we can go through it here. So the first item in this command is reasonably straightforward. It's the actual location of the network share that you want to connect to. So you'll recognize this from the previous command where we specified that. So it's in my vault local scratch backup. But what we'll see here is that instead of the quotation marks that we've been using to specify the space between the words pi and backup, I've actually used a backslash and the 040 uh, command in order to specify a space. The reason I did that is I'm not 100% certain why, but the file system tab doesn't seem to like to uh, recognize quotation marks. Even if I wrap the full string in the quotes, or if I wrap the specific uh, folder in the quotes, none of that seems to work, even though it works whenever I mount it manually. I'm not sure why a lot of people have described that uh, they have complete success with it, but for me, it never seemed to work. So I've gone ahead and used this command instead. Then the next command that we've got here is the destination command. We're using it to mount the network share to the network backup folder. And then the next command is one that we've also been familiar with from our previous manual mount. It's to tell it that it's a CIFS uh, type uh, file share. And then of course, we'll recognize the other commands here as well, which is the username that we've used to access the network share and the password that we've used to access the network share. If you're not using a username and password to access your network share, that's not necessary here. But once again, I very strongly recommend that you do. So if we scroll over to a little bit to the uh, right, so I will just get this uh, command up. We can see it's a little bit cut off on my screen here, but we can speed, see that I've also specified the owner of the uh, file share whenever it's mounted. So once again, that's the Raspberry Pi user, which allows the Raspberry Pi user to just do anything it needs to in that file system share. So if I specify a little bit to the right here, 
we can see that the next part of the command is the GID, the group ID. Again, that's 1000. Again, that's the Raspberry Pi's user group, which means that the Raspberry Pi will have permissions to do anything it needs to do on uh, the system itself. Now, the next bit is a little bit of a unique command. Uh, I've specified this x hyphen system d system ed dot auto mount. Uh, what that does is it uh, tells the Raspberry Pi to uh, when it boots up, give it a couple of minutes, let the network connection be established before it tries to mount the drive. The reason I've specified this is because I was finding that on reboot, the network connection was not coming up fast enough and therefore the network drive was not always mounting kind of consistently. And this is what I found to be the solution here. You may or may not need that as part of your uh, installation, but I have uh, found it to be incredibly useful. Now, the last two items that we've got specified here is zero, 00. So these are uh, items that are used by the file system uh, table in order to specify whether or not a backup operation or a file system check should be done. We're specifying zero, 00 here because for the vast majority of users, that's exactly what you want. You don't want to change this. This does need to be in here. Don't remove it, but uh, you can specify zero, 00. That's perfectly acceptable. So once we've gone ahead and entered that command, you can go ahead if you're using nano and hit control X, which will prompt you to see if you want to save the changes that you've made. We're going to go ahead and hit yes. And then it's going to ask us whether or not we want to overwrite the existing file. Once again, we're going to hit enter and then we'll be brought back to the main page of our Raspberry Pi. So the next thing for us to do is go ahead and test to make sure that the network drive is mounted on reboot. So we're going to go ahead and type in sudo reboot and hit enter. And in a second, the network uh, connection is going to be closed and we're just going to hit uh, OK there. So once the Raspberry Pi comes back up again, we can go ahead and log in as normal using our username and password. And once we're logged in, if we run the df h command once more, we can see that the network share has indeed been mounted, which means that it'll mount again every time that it boots. So that's it, guys. That's how to get a network share mounted on your Raspberry Pi. I hope you enjoyed this content and I will catch you guys on the flip side.